Okay, so now uh, we are back. This is video number four. And now we will start with some statistical tests that we will do. And as you can see, I have already finished with the creation of the variables. So I have now global mindset, collectivism, materialism, biospheric values, networking skills, and professional aspirations all in here. So now it's finished. So let's start with the first statistics, statistical test that we need to do. And this is the um, descriptive statistics. So please click on analyze, then descriptive statistics, and then descriptive. And then you will have this in here, the descriptive uh, tape. So I think that here the best approach is to have a certain order because you could just put everything in variables and that's it. But I think it's good if you follow this logic. Start with the dependent variable, global mindset, start in there. And then the next, select your independent variable. I will take materialism because I think it's going to be an interesting case. I will take materialism. Mind that I am one of these groups who have materialism. If you have biospheric values, select that one first. And then select the other four, move them here, and then go back to the controls. So until international, right? So it's six, seven uh, until here, and then move them here. And then that's it. You only click on OK. And now you will have something like this. So this table is actually very powerful. It tells you the descriptive statistics from all of the things that we collected. As you can see, uh, for example, few quick things that we can discuss. Uh, for the global mindset, the average is 7.4. So from a scale from one to 10, the, the, the average should be five, right? That's the average of one to 10, but we actually have 7.4 that actually means that this sample has a high global mindset on their own the average is 7.4 is quite high then we have minimum and maximum like there seems to be one person who is totally the opposite of global mindset only one but we also have people who reach the highest level and you can try to do this analysis uh, over everything that we have done all the variables that we have we also have gender. In terms of gender, because gender is only zero and one, actually gender tells us how many females do we have. We have 59% female. In terms of age, the average age is 23.5, but we have maximum of 49. It's still fine. We don't have any, any number that doesn't make sense, like 220. I don't know, people do not have that age. That will be a, a mistake. In terms of years, I mean, the average is 3.2. That's very good, it's like typical average of the university studies, but the maximum is 13 and we could be suspicious and say 13 is too much. You can do two things. You can check if there are many very high numbers, because I mean, how, how, mu how much time do you need to study for a degree? In Sweden, this can be tricky because maybe someone started and then is coming back. That could be a possibility. So maybe they started 14 years ago and they are now just finishing their dissertation or something. That's also very common. So take a look. If there are not too many that are too high, we can we can move forward. And I think that is the case in here. We have 82% of people from Young Shopping University. The average, in terms of level, it moves more, more towards the bachelor. Uh, Sweden, People born in Sweden are not, it's almost 50-50, that's great. And international experience is also more or less the same, 50-50. And then the standard deviation is, it tells you how much difference it is. For example, in global mindset, it seems that the, the, the variation in, in how people answer is not that dif different. It seems like people behave more or less similar because 1.3 is smaller than two, for example. The materialism seems to be a variable where people actually have high variations. Like they actually, uh, maybe there's people who have much less or much more. Technically, the standard deviation tells you that uh, from the average to 65% of, of, of your sample, you will cover uh, the mean plus this number. So 65% of the sample that we have should be in between 3.4 and 7.4. So between that range, we have 65% uh, of the population. And twice that, we cover 95% of the population. Compared to this, 
this will be much tighter because people behave more similar. So the standard deviation tells you how different people behave in your sample. Global mindset, mindset seems to be something where people agree they behave more or less the same, but materialism, it's a little bit more differences. That's how you interpret the standard deviation. And that's it. Uh, I will tell you what to write and also how to report. I will tell you how to move this into Excel. Don't worry about it. But uh, then, then let's do the next and calculation and analysis. The next one is the correlation matrix. So go to analyze, then go to, uh, where is it, correlate, and then click on B variate in here. And you need to follow the same uh, logic from the previous table. You start with the dependent variable, your independent variable, I am assuming I am materialism group, and then the other four, and then the control variables like this. Keep everything like this. We're going to use Pearson correlation because we probably have a normal distribution. And so we're using parametric test and then we click OK. So the correlation tables is a very also powerful, uh, quick and simple statistical thing that we can use because it will tell you how much correlation is between one thing and the other. So for example, the global mindset seems to have high correlation with materialism. And, that ma and, and how do I know that? It's because first of all, this number in here, the Pearson correlation is quite big. 1.7, I mean, it's something compared to others, right? 0 0.002, that's very low. So it's quite big. Then we also have these stars in here. These stars also show you that that correlation is significant also based on a test that SPSS is doing. So also try to look for the stars. The stars will tell you a lot of information. And then finally, the negative sign tells you that that correlation is negative. So if materialism is high, the global mindset will be less because the relationship is negative. And that is different with collectivism. With collectivism, it's also significant, but the relationship is positive. So for the correlation matrix, what you need to discuss is, of course, the global mindset with your variable. Let's see, because this will give us hints of what's going on. I mean, like, it seems that things are going to work. It gives us hints. We still need to do more tests, but it's a good sign. But also try to look for interesting, um, interesting correlations that maybe you can discuss a little bit. For example, collectivism and age seems to have a positive correlation. It seems like the older you are, the more collectivistic you become. When you are younger, maybe you are more individualistic. It's just a correlation that we found from here. We cannot build any conclusions from this. Don't try to go to the newspaper and tell them this. No, it's not like that. So it's just something that we found. You can talk about it, but we cannot really build any conclusions. So it's just like that, like the correlation matrix show good, like a significant positive or negative correlation between this and that. A typical thing is if you go to Sweden, Sweden seems to have a, a negative correlation with global mindset. So it seems that if you are born in Sweden, you have less global mindset. And for materialism, it's also significant because it has one star, but it's actually positive. So it seems that if you are born in Sweden, you are more materialistic. But again, we cannot be, we cannot really conclude that. It's just correlation, but we we will have to do a different study. We will have to create a different survey because we know this is not enough data. This is not enough analysis to, to finish with that conclusion. You say it looks like this is what the correlation matrix says, but that's it. You don't need more. So that's it. Those are the two first tests that we are going to do. Now we are going to move to the main thing that we are doing now, the regression models. So I will finish the video and we will do that in the next video.